Good evening. Welcome to Storytime with Gina. This is a podcast on this YouTube channel that I do every night at 8.30 p.m. And the stories will vary from time to time. But tonight I want to read about Pinocchio. But before we get into Pinocchio, we're going to read about honesty since Pinocchio had a problem being honest. To be honest is to be real, genuine, authentic, and bona fide. To be dishonest is to be partly feigned, forged, faked, or fictitious. Honesty expresses both self-respect and respect for others. Dishonesty fully respects neither oneself nor others. Honesty imbues lives with openness, reliability, and candor. It expresses a disposition to live in the light. Dishonesty seeks shade, cover, or concealment. It is a disposition to live partly in the dark. Why would anyone want to be dishonest? That is a question with which the Irish satirist Jonathan Swift poignantly confronts his readers in A Voyage to the Hoy Hymns in Gulliver's Travels. The Hoy Hymns were such rational creatures that they found dishonesty among unintelligible. As one of them explained to Gulliver, the use of speech was to make us understand one another and to receive information of facts. Now, if anyone said the thing which was not the hoyhams, awkward locution for referring to the curious practice of telling lies, these ends were defeated. Dishonesty, however, it would have no role to play in a world that revered reality and was inhabited by fully rational creatures. Human beings are not fully rational. However, as Swift delighted in pointing out, humans, unlike hoi humans, harbor a disparate array of tendencies and impulses that do not spontaneously harmonize with reason. Human beings need both practice and study over time to become persons of integrity and effective goodwill. And until they have achieved such a state, they may do all sorts of things that prudence tells them had better be concealed. Lying is an easy tool of concealment and when often employed all too easily hardens into a malignant vice. Honesty is of pervasive human importance. I hate the man like the very gates of death who says one thing but hides another in his heart cries the anguish Achilles in Homer's Iliad. Every social activity, every human enterprise requiring people to act in concert is impeded when people aren't honest with one another. Honesty here is not just veracity, truth-telling, but the honesty of an honest day's work is for an honest day's pay. It is the honesty that the prophet Jeremiah sought. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and take note. Search its squares and see if you can find one 
who acts justly and seeks truth. It is the honesty that the cynic philosopher Diogenes sought later in Athens and Corinth, an image that has proved remarkably durable. With candle and lanthorn, when the sun shined, I sought honest men, but none could I find. As a 17th century chapbook put it, Pinocchio's lie lengthened nose is an image scarcely a hundred years old now, but it too has happily found a place among our enduring popular stories. How is honesty best cultivated? Like most virtues, it is best developed and exercised in harmony with others. The more it is exert, the more it is exercised, the more it becomes a settled disposition. But there is a quick answer that may be given in three words. Take it seriously. Take recognition of the fact that honesty is a fundamental condition for human intercourse and exchange for friendship for all genuine community. But be sure to take it seriously for itself, not just as the best policy. Honesty is better than all policy. As the philosopher Immanuel Kant perspectively put it, there is all the moral difference in the world being taking the condition of oneself seriously and taking pains not to get caught. Parents often say, don't let me catch you doing that again. And that is all right, but a good honest life is more than that. Moral development is not a game of catch me if you can. It is better to focus clearly on what really matters, the kind of person that one is. So now that we know a little bit more about what honesty means, we're going to read Pinocchio. Let's get right over to Pinocchio. We can do it. We're going to do it. Pinocchio by Carlo Lorenzini. The lengthening nose has become one of the most instantly recognized symbols of dishonesty, thanks to the famous scene from Carlo Lorenzini's classic 19th century Italian tale, Pinocchio. Here the wooden puppet, with the aid of the fairy with the blue hair, is recovering from the effects of having fallen in with the wrong crowd. When the three doctors had gone, the fairy came to Pinocchio and, upon touching his forehead, perceived that he had a high fever. So she put a white powder in a glass of water and gave it to him, saying gently, Drink this, and after a while you will be well. Pinocchio gazed at the glass, made a wry face, and asked whiningly, Is it sweet or bitter? It is bitter, but will do you good. If it is bitter, I don't want it. Listen to me. Drink it. But I don't like bitter things. Drink it, and then I will give you a lump of sugar to take the taste out of your mouth. Where is the lump of sugar? Here it is. Give it to me first, and then I will take the medicine. You promise? Yes. The fairy gave him the sugar, and Pinocchio soon finished it. Then he said, licking his lips, how nice it would be if sugar were medicine. I'd take it every day. Now keep your promise and take the medicine, said the fairy. It will make you well. Pinocchio held the glass in his hand and sniffed at its contents, then put it to his mouth, then smelled it again, and finally said, 
It's too bitter. It's too bitter. I can't possibly gulp it down. How can you say that when you haven't tasted it? Oh, I can imagine. I can tell by the smell. Give me another lump of sugar and I will drink it. So the fairy, with all the patience of an indulgent mama, put another lump of sugar in his mouth and then handed him the medicine again. Truly, I can't drink it, wailed the marinette with a thousand grimaces. Why? Because that pillow is too close to my feet. The fairy moved the pillow. It's no use. I can't drink it. What else annoys you? That door is ajar. The fairy shut the door. Honestly, I can't drink that bitter stuff, howled Pinocchio. No, no, no. My boy, you will be sorry. I don't care. You'll die of the fever. I don't care. I'd rather die than take that bitter medicine. All right, then, said the fairy. At this, the door opened and in walked four rabbits, black as ink, and carrying a coffin on their shoulders. What do you want, Pinocchio? said, sitting up. We have come to take you away, said the largest rabbit. To take me away? Why, I'm not dead yet. No, not yet, but when you... You will be in a few moments since you have refused to take the medicine that would make you well. Oh my, fairy, my fairy, yelled Pinocchio. Give me that medicine quickly. Send them away. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And he seized the glass with both hands and drank the dulse down with one gulp. Whew, said the rabbits. We have come on a fool's errand, and taking the coffin up on their shoulders, they went away grumbling. Not long afterward, Pinocchio jumped out of bed entirely well. For you must know that the wooden boys are rarely ill and then get well quickly. When the fairy saw him capering around the room happy as a chicken that had just burst its shell, she said, So my medicine cured you. It really cured you. Yes, indeed, I had a close call. Then why did you make such a fuss about taking it? Oh, boys are all like that. We are more afraid of the medicine than of the illness. For shame. Boys ought to know that a good remedy taken in time often keeps off a dangerous sickness, perhaps death. The next time I shan't be so bad, I shall remember those black rabbits in the coffin, and then I'll take the medicine right away. That's right. Now come and tell me how you happened to fall into the hands of the thieves. Pinocchio told faithfully all that had happened to him, and when he had ended, the fairy asked, What did you do with the four gold pieces? I lost them, replied Pinocchio, but he told a lie because he had them in his pocket. The moment he said this, his nose, which was already long enough, grew four inches longer. Where did you lose them? asked the fairy. In the forest near here. At the second lie, the nose grew still longer. Hmm. If you have lost them in the forest near here, said the fairy, we shall soon find them. For everything here is always found. Ah, oh, now I recollect, said the marinette. I did not lose the coins, but I swallowed them uh, when I took the medicine. At the third lie, Pinocchio's nose grew so long... <laughs> <laughs> he could not turn around. <laughs> if he turned one way, he struck it against the bedpost or the window. If he turned the other, he hit the wall or the door. 
<laughs> the fairy <laughs> the fairy looked at him and began to laugh <laughs> that gives me a hot flash <laughs> that's that's funny <laughs> <laughs> He's so stupid. <laughs> he couldn't even tell his nose was growing. <laughs> um, why are you laughing? asked the marinette sheepishly. I laugh at the foolish lies you have told. How did you know they were lies? <laughs> lies, my boy are recognized at once because they are of only two kinds. Some have short legs and others have long noses. <laughs> Yours are the kind that have long noses. <laughs> He's clueless. Um, Pinocchio was so crestfallen that he tried to run away and hide himself, but he couldn't. His nose, <laughs> his nose had grown so long that he couldn't get through the door. <laughs> he couldn't get through the door. Oh my goodness, you all. The fairy let the marinette cry and howl for a good half an hour. On account of his long nose. <laughs> so, <laughs> she did this in order to teach him a lesson upon the folly of telling falsehoods. But when she saw his eyes were swollen and his face was red with weeping, well, she was moved to pity for him. She clapped her hands together and at the signal of a large flock of woodpeckers, flew into the window and all alighting one by one upon Pinocchio's nose, they pecked so hard that in a few moments it was reduced to its usual size. Yeah, that's so funny. That was Pinocchio in the, um, the book of virtues, you all. That's perfect. It is perfect. See, you, he, couldn't, he couldn't get away with it because his nose kept on growing and he didn't even know it. He didn't even realize that she could see it physically. So that really is a, a good story of morals. That's right. Just because you think um, somebody ain't going to be able to tell, that somebody's going to be able to tell when you're lying. And so really, honesty is the best policy. It keeps you out of trouble and you don't have to have your nose grow way out there that you can't fit through the door. You won't. So I'm going to go... And um, with that being said, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world, hello from my heart to yours. Love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And this is uh, Storytime with Gina. This is pre-recorded because uh, I just felt like reading it right now. And, but it's going to play as a live stream, an instant premiere. Love you.